Today, a court hearing will be held to determine how the $15 million from a GoFundMe campaign will be split between the families of the people killed and injured in the tragic Humboldt Broncos bus crash. This comes as calls to the provincial government to improve the safety of the intersection where the ca crash took place have still not been answered. Rural Municipality ca Councillor Brad Shiltroth, who represents the area where the crash happened, joins us this morning. Thank you so much for being here, Brad. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for... So uh, we reached out to Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe for a statement, and this was his office's response. Quote, in the aftermath of the tragic events of April 6th, the government of Saskatchewan committed to hiring an independent engineering firm to review the safety of the Highway 35-335 intersection. Premier Moe has committed to implementing any recommendations from this review. We are awaiting the final report. So, sir, has anything been done to improve the safety of the intersection up, uh, uh, until now? There has been a few small improvements uh, for visual um, around the one corner of the intersection. There's been a few trees removed and some signage put up and a speed re restriction uh, has been implemented ever since the accident. And it's been maintained still to, till today. To, uh, today, sorry. Now, Brad, you live near the bus crash site. You've, st you've seen thousands of cars pass through that exact location over the years. It, sometimes it's tough when we see pictures to get a sense of, of why it might be so dangerous. Could you, could you let us in on why that intersection has been so deadly? Well, it's got a lot of activity at it. It's a, two grain terminals and a, a yard on one corner and uh, two railway crossings to the west, uh, very close to the intersection. So there's lots of activity and lots of, lots of visual um, impairments some to do with traffic trains and other obstacles but uh, in relevance to every other intersection in Saskatchewan it's it's fairly busy but nothing like uh, intersections in Ontario that you guys are used to so it's it's all relevant I guess but Brad, this isn't the first time a deadly crash has happened at that intersection. Two decades ago, six members of a BC family were killed in that exact same spot. Now, you've suggested installing rumble strips. How would something like that help? Well, I think it would just make people more aware. Uh, for instance, if that semi-driver wasn't aware of the intersection ahead of him, he might have been aware when you hit rumble strips. It would alarm you that you might have to stop ahead or pay attention to what's coming so um, unfortunately I've been informed that that pavement isn't able uh, at the RM level they've told us we haven't but we're they're not the highways department's not able to uh, put rumble strips in that type of pavement it's not uh, it's cold rolled pavement and it will just break apart so they have to do something different in order to install rumble strips so I think that's probably what they're looking at. Now I'm not sure. We, we've been, we've given some advice to them what we thought at the RM level, and that's they've taken it on, and we haven't heard anything back from that. Well, Brad, we'll be following this story very closely. Thanks so much for your insights this morning. Thank you.